Welcome back to the next video, everybody. Today, we're going to be looking at Zariski tangent modules. So you should definitely watch the previous video on Zariski tangent spaces first, because this video is essentially just the relative version of that video. All right. So again, the previous video describes uh, the Zariski tangent space in the absolute case. So the case when we're working over a base field K. Suppose now that we're in the relative case, meaning we have a fixed coefficient lambda algebra A, which isn't necessarily K, and a covariant functor D from C sub lambda of A to sets such that the value of D on the A augmented coefficient lambda algebra A itself, in other words, D of A, is just a single point. Because remember in the last video, D of K was a single point, and that was sort of a defining property of Zariski tangent spaces. Okay, so we're gonna play the same game here, basically. Uh, let A bracket epsilon denote the coefficient lambda algebra, A bracket T mod T squared, and set epsilon equal to T mod T squared. Then a bracket epsilon is a free rank two a module with basis one epsilon. So we get a similar decomposition that we had last video when we were looking at k bracket epsilon. We find that a bracket epsilon is a direct sum epsilon times a. And this can be viewed as an a augmented coefficient lambda algebra. So it's actually in our category. What's the augmentation map? Well, you just project onto the first coordinate, right? Okay. Or in other words, you pass to the quotient by the ideal generated by epsilon. All right, so uh, A bracket epsilon is an A module object in the category C sub A in the sense that it does have an addition law, A bracket epsilon cross A bracket epsilon over A to itself. We'll call that map plus. And what do you do? You send X plus Y times epsilon comma X plus Y two times epsilon to X plus Y one plus Y two times epsilon, just like we did last video. And this is also endowed with a scalar multiplication by elements alpha of A via a map, which we'll call dot alpha from A bracket epsilon to itself. What does that map do? It sends X plus Y times epsilon to X plus alpha times Y times epsilon. And these operations do indeed formally satisfy all the properties that A module operations should from the definition of module from abstract algebra class. So you can check all that. This time around, A bracket epsilon across itself over A is again a coefficient lambda algebra, so it is in the category, since it's still no theory. okay? If you remember, we made a technical remark about this a couple of video, videos ago. You have to watch out for this kind of thing. You'd like your categories to be closed under products whenever possible for reasons that will become clear in future videos, basically. Okay, so... Suppose D satisfies what we'll call the tangent A module hypothesis T sub A. So this is akin to the ta uh, tangent space hypothesis T sub K from the last video. And if you were paying attention last video, the definition of the tangent A module hypothesis is not surprising. We want the map H from D of A bracket epsilon cross itself over A to D of A bracket epsilon cross D of A bracket epsilon to be a bijection. We can then make an analogous definition to that of the previous video, this risky tangent space definition. The Zariski tangent A module denoted T sub D A or T sub D if A is clear is just D of A bracket epsilon. And this set inherits an A module structure as follows. The addition law is just the composition of H inverse followed by D of plus where plus was defined on the previous slides, okay? And we'll note finally that the absolute case of the previous video, so the case K equals E, that's really just a special case of the relative case here gotten by setting A equals K, which might not surprise you, but there's a couple of things you have to check there. I mean, first of all, you have to make sure that any lambda algebra has a natural K augmentation, but that's just obvious. And I think that's really about it. Other than that, I think everything kind of just agrees. Okay, so we'll begin putting all this to good work. We'll look a little bit more at Zariski tangent spaces and modules starting next video. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.